Okay, let's do the practice test number three here. Uh, hopefully my cursor is working. So ball is thrown up into the air from the edge of a 48 uh, foot high cliff. So it eventually lands on the ground. The graph below shows the ball, the height of the ball. Which interval of the ball is always decreasing? So the ball is increasing, 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 and then it looks like when x at, at 2.5, all the way down to 5.5. So the answer would be number 3. All right. Which graph shows the solution of the two given inequalities? So again, the easiest way for me is to pick a couple points. So let's take 0, 0, because it's not in this solution set. And you can see it is in this one, it isn't in this one, and it is in this one. And you can tell it is because it's double shaded. So 0 plus 0 is greater than 2. Well, 0 isn't greater than 2. So right off the bat, I know 0 can't be in my solution set. So I can rule out number 3 and I can rule out number 4. Now I'm down to 1 and 3. Now remember, I've got a equals sign, which is a solid, or less than or greater than equals is a solid line, but just a greater than or less than sign is a dotted line. So I know that 0, 0 can't be in my solution set. 1 is a solid line, 1 is a dotted line, so the answer to this one has to be number 2. All right, the third question. A satellite company, a one-time charge, and a monthly service card. The total cost is, so the monthly service charge must be 90 because that's in front of the X, right? And the one-time fee is the 40. So we just got to figure out that looks like it's number 2. Okay? Oh, that's interesting. I got a question with no question. Anyways. Keith determines that the zeros, okay, the zeros are where y equals zero, or it crosses the x-axis, are negative six and five. So I must have, in order for one of my solutions to be x, uh, y equals five, it must be, or x equals five, it must be x minus five. And for one of my solutions to be negative 6, it must be x plus 6. Because remember, when I solve for x, like x plus 6, I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides to solve for x. And that'll get my x negative 6. So it would be number 3. If 4x, to the, the, the roots of the equation are, okay, so we have to factor this. I mean, the first thing is to take a common factor out of this. So a common factor is 4. So I take 4 out of this, so I get x squared minus 25. And then I'm going to say x squared minus 25 is a difference of two perfect squares. So I get x plus 5, x minus 5. So my two answers are number three, uh, minus five and five. All right. Uh, Isabel collects data from two different companies with four employees, the results of the study, da, 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 da. Now, the easiest thing here is the salary range for company two is huge, right? Much bigger than the salary range for company one. So... Number three, the other ones aren't, the median for both companies are greater than 37. Well, the middle value of the first set isn't bigger than 37. The mean salary for company one is greater than the mean salary for company two. That's not true because this 65 throws company two way up. And so it's the range is huge on company two versus company one. Well, let's see, a population that has initially 200 birds. So at zero, I got to be at 200, so I can throw this first guy out. Um, birds double every 10 years, so it's increasing, so I know it's an exponential. So I know it's got to start at 20. It's not decreasing, so I can throw this guy out. It's increasing exponentially, and this is increasing linearly, the same amount. So my answer is number three. 
which situation could be modeled as a linear function? So this is where it's the, we're adding or subtracting the same amount, not a percentage. So growth rate of 5% we can throw out. Bacteria doubles we can throw out because those are both exponential. Uh, base plus 20 cents, there it is, number three. Concentration decays at a factor of one-third, so it's again a percentage, so the answer is, not, is three. The table also is the average diameter of a pupil in a person's eye as he grows older. What is the rate of change? So rate of change is basically the slope. So if I take my change in y, 2.3 minus 4.7, divided by my change in x, 80 minus 60. If you do that math, you're going to get answer number 4, uh, negative 0.04, right? Because I'm decreasing over time, so I know it's got to be a negative, and then I just calculate the slope. 4.7 minus 2.3 is 2.4, 80 minus 20 is 60, 2.4 divided by 60 is 0.04. All right. Boy, I keep adding a lot of these. Okay. To keep track with his profit, no one has decided to model as stick as he found that his profits only declined when he sold between 10 and 40 tickets. So I got to see between 10 and 40, where does it decline? Well, between 10 and 40, it's either increasing or flat in this first graph. It's increasing in the second graph. In the third graph, it's decreasing during the entire interval. In the fourth graph, it's increasing and then decreasing. So the answer would be number three. Okay, a mapping of the diagram. Uh, uh, so this is not a function because I've got an X that max matches to two different Ys, right? February goes to 28 and 29. So number three, it's not of a function. I can't have an X mapping to two different Ys. Which value would be solution for this minus this? Well, you could just plug each one of these in, but uh, if I plug in a negative number, I'm going to have uh, 4 times a negative 10 is going to be a negative 40, a minus minus is going to be adding, so there's no way these negative numbers are going to create us less than 7. So if I put 10 in here, I get 47 minus 40, so that's 7. 7 isn't less than 7, so the 11 is going to work 4 times uh, 11 is 44, 47 minus 44 is 3, so answer number 4. The zeros of a function, so remember zeros are where my y is equal to 0, so I can just factor this guy, so I've got to get <clears throat> factors of 24 that add to a negative 3, so those two factors would be a negative 6 and a positive 4, so I would have x minus 6, times x plus 4. When I solve for x, I'll get negative 4 and 6. Answer number 3. The box pot below, the third quartile. Remember, this is my range, my high to my low. This middle line is my median. This number is my quartile 1, 75. This number is my quartile 3, 90. So the answer is number 290. Which solution is not a linear function? Okay, so again, we're, at, at, and we're not looking for percentages. So which one is not? Well, right off the bat, I can look at this bottom one, 15%. That's going to be an exponential function. So the one that's not linear is number four. All the others have a flat rate, $10 per month, $3 per mile. Dollar fifteen or twelve fifty per hour. Which graph does not represent a function that is always increasing over the range of negative two to two? Well, this one's always increasing. This one's not. It goes up and down. Let's just double check. This one's always increasing, and this one in the interval negative two to two is always increasing. So the answer is three. Which relationship is not a function? So I got to look for any x that maps to more than one y. So um, 
So I can have A mapped to Y and C. I, what I can't have is I can't have what's in scenario four, where an X, i.e. six, is mapping to two different Ys. So the answer is four. Students were asked to write an equation which had a leading coefficient of three and a constant of negative four. So I got to look for the highest. So the leading and number one, the lead coefficient would be negative two. So we can throw that guy out. This guy, our lead coefficient is negative three. And our constant is negative four, but we want a positive three. So this third one, our lead coefficient is a positive three but our constant is a positive four, so that doesn't work. And number four, our lead coefficient is a positive three, and our constant is a negative four, so the answer is number four. Okay.